Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. Today I'm going to be fooling around in the newly released beta version of Kerbal Space Program. It's officially in beta. So let's actually look at what's new and what they've improved and what they've changed. Starting with the career mode. And one of the new additions is that, look at that, there's a tutorial now that actually introduces various things that essentially tell you everything about the game, how to play it, and so on and so forth. And you actually start with almost no buildings, or that is, your buildings are actually like really simple at first, you actually have to upgrade them. Uh, there's a right click menu now um, that basically brings up the information about the building and allows you to upgrade the building. So essentially they've added a lot of RPG elements, so now you don't just actually um, create spaceships, or you don't create them from scratch, but you actually have to really um, upgrade stuff, upgrade things, and including your Kerbals, they actually get um, experience points now. So as you start your career mode from scratch with basically nothing, you'll actually have to gain points. Oh my god, I literally have nothing here. You have to gain points and you have to actually try to achieve uh, various things in order for you to progress. They've also added a new building called an administration building that actually has this actually um, a really cool feature that basically allows you to exchange some of the um, uh, currency that you have in excess for another currency. For example, if I have too much money, I can actually exchange it for science or exchange it for um, what should we call it for the reputation, or I can actually um, lose some of both and get some reputation. So there's quite a lot of various uh, ways for you to kind of trade. Um, one currency for another by basically doing all these kinds of um, strategies. So like there's a finance guy, there's a science guy, public creations guy, and operations guy, and each of them in, uh, gives you a different way of uh, gaining different currencies. Let's look at the astronaut complex. So now you have, um, except for stupidity and courage, you have experience points. And basically, as you play as one character, they've, uh, they'll acquire these stars, which basically make them more effective. Um, so if I look at Jebediah Kerman right now, let me just uh, take a look at him. And right there on the bottom it says, Pilot provides assistance in flying the vessel. So as he acquires experience, it becomes easier to fly the vessel. Um, this guy right here is an engineer, Bill Kerman is an engineer, and he actually can repair parts uh, with experience. And Bob Kerman is a scientist and he actually gives you more science points with experience. So the more you use them, the more experience they get, the more effective they become. Uh, in mission control, you now have uh, a lot more information about each mission. They've actually redone some of the careers, and they're actually a lot more fun to do now, a lot more effective. There's quite a lot of um, information that has been added, and basically they've listened to what people are saying about these uh, career modes becoming kind of useless with time, and they've actually made them more meaningful and more fun. And here's an example of fully upgraded space center. Basically, this is where you upgrade everything and it's fully operational. Uh, if you do damage it by accident, by, uh, for example, smash into one of the buildings, you can repair it right here, also by right clicking on it. And all of this, of course, costs money. Now, let's look at the technology center. It actually hasn't changed that much. Uh, the research and development is still pretty much the same. There's, um, you have the research tree, you have the science archives that essentially shows you, show you your achievements and what you've done, what you haven't done. Um, so, for example, if you want to focus on, let's just say, Eve. No, I don't have anything on Eve. Okay, let's look at... Let's look at the moon. So here's my achievements for the moon and some of the things I haven't done yet. So for example, I have not reported from moon's east crater, which is something that I may be doing next time. And so essentially this tells you everything about all the achievements you've done so far. But some of the biggest changes are basically here when you start making a spaceship. So they've actually redone some of these tabs, making them a little bit more convenient. So you have fuel tanks and engines that are separate now. Uh, you also have this advanced tab that shows you, it basically filters things by either function or module or resources and so forth. And, and um, I'm gonna just remove this for a second. And uh, they've also added a few new parts and I'll show them to you in a second when I actually go to my sandbox mode. Uh, but essentially here's the biggest change. So let's. Uh, let's go and start making a simple um, let's make a simple spacecraft now here's a super simple spacecraft and I want to put an engine in it but the thing is let's just say I want to actually uh, change the either location or um, orientation of my engine and uh, they've added these four buttons here one is offset which is essentially where you get to move your part a little bit offset it a little bit uh, and the other one is rotation. So this was actually already in the game, but you had to use W, A, S, D, Q, and E keys to, to do this. And now it's a lot more visual, a lot more convenient. So you can actually flip the part, you can rotate it, you can change the orientation and so on and so forth. 
And there's another button right here called the root, which is essentially something that you can use to connect two parts together. So for example, I've currently connected two of my parts and these two parts, oh no, it's not working. Uh, these two parts that I have connected are now, they basically become one part. So when you're building rockets, sometimes it's easier to just connect something. Like if you're building a really complicated engine with um, various stages and you just don't want to recreate it for the second part, you can actually root them together and then they'll act as one part now. So this is now one part that I can actually use to connect to this part. There we go. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it's close enough. Um, all right, so let's look at some of the new parts. And the new parts are right here, so they basically created a new, uh, or added a new Mark III cockpit, which essentially makes, um, gives, or gives you a chance to create uh, a space shuttle. So essentially, this is sort of like something people have been asking for, for a long time, so now you can create a legit space shuttle by adding all these Mark III parts to it, and creating something that looks space shuttle-y. That includes another part that's actually really awesome it's a passenger module that you can actually add creating uh, a module where you can stuff your Kerbins for sort of like a transit trip or if you're trying to transfer a lot of people to your space station or the moon or so on uh, you can actually add this faucet passenger module that I believe holds 16 people there's actually 16 uh, Kerbins you can put inside all right so let's fool around a little bit and let's make something out of this mark 3 cockpit and actually let's make our first mark 3 SSTO all right, so here it is. It's smiley face as a steel, and it looks absolutely awesome. I love this. So I've actually attached a Mark III to Mark II conversion and then Mark II to Mark I conversion so that it would look more slick and have an engine at the end. So this looks like it might not actually be able to fly. Uh, I had to put these two extra um, winglets right here just to make it lift a little bit better because its nose is way too heavy. This is actually a pretty heavy cockpit. I had to even remove my monopropellant because it was getting too heavy. But let's actually see if it flies. All right, there's three pilots here. Uh, Jolie Kerman, Sandberg Kerman, Jeff Rell Kerman. People I have never heard of. Um, oh, actually, I forgot to mention, there's one problem with uh, the new modules is that they don't actually have IVA yet. If you click on IVA, there's nothing. It's just black. So they've, uh, it's a small bug that basically does not allow you to look through from the, co um, from the cabin, from the cockpit. Uh, hopefully they'll fix this soon because I'd be, I would love to see what it looks like from the inside. It's the same with the um, passenger module. Anyway, uh, let's start this and as I'm trying to take off, uh, I'll show you another really awesome addition. This is for people that have never, never used MacJab, which is sort of like me. I have never used Mac. Oh, look at that. We're already flying. Yay. Mission success. Best SSTO ever. Uh, technically, it's not an SSTO because I only have um, a jet engine, so I can technically reach an orbit because I've put so many air uh, thingamajigs, look at that, there's like seven or eight of them. Um, so technically, I, yes, I can reach an orbit, but I just won't be able to return back to Kerbin, which is fine. Um, but yeah, the awesome addition is right here, look at that. There's an autopilot now. It's um, essentially the way it works is it aligns you with a waypoint or one of these markers. So this one here is to align you with the prograde, with, with the yellow thingy. This one is the opposite retrograde. This here is with your waypoint, a normal waypoint or uh, anti-normal waypoint. And this here is the, um, toward your um, target or away from your target. So this is pretty awesome. Makes things a little bit easier for people that prefer to do it manually, just like myself. Um, if you've used MacJab, you probably won't be impressed by this because you're used to autopiloting. But if you're a manual person like me, all you have to do is click on this and it aligns automatically. Click on this and it does the opposite. Back on, the, back on this and oh geez we're losing control but look at that it just rewinds right just like that all right so uh, and it has a stability assist right here which basically makes it uh makes it a little bit easier to stabilize things um so let's see if we can enrich the orbit within that thing it looks pretty awesome i'm, I'm loving the shape it reminds me of these really old um uh, experimental soviet designs that basically looked just like that it looked really funky like they were not able to fly but they were totally flying uh, the Soviet Union was pretty awesome at creating some uh, strange looking uh, aircraft that just happened to fly for no reason and this is just like that and let's see if it can actually reach the orbit all right so it is flying really really well and flying pretty high but unfortunately it's too nose heavy so I don't know if I'll be able to reach the orbit it just doesn't want to get into that position where I can actually 
uh, reach high enough altitudes for it to get into orbit. Uh, but also, it just it's this is awesome and all, but I think this is enough. Let's actually go a little bit further and make something a little bit more crazy. And when I say crazy, I mean really crazy. Let's actually go a little bit further and use Mark III to create an absolute monster of an airplane. This right here, introducing uh, SSSTO. What is what is the extra S for? I don't actually know. It, maybe sausage because it's very long, or possibly um, serpent because it kind of looks like a serpent. Anyway, so will this actually fly, or more importantly, will this be able to reach the orbit? Let's find out. I'm actually going to stuff uh, all of my Kerbins into this. If you look closer, right there on the side, you'll see that all of these are actually uh, passenger modules, and it can fit 180 Kerbins. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to fit all my Kerbals into this, and then put them into orbit and just release them. Let's find out if this flies. Okay, so my SSSTO looks pretty, pretty long. Uh, I could have make, made it longer, but the thing is, my computer cannot handle this much. Even right now, you can see that the frame rate is horrible. Uh, but the co coolest part about this is, I like these ridges, look at them. They look, make, make it look like a, some kind of a reptile, like an actual serpent. Um, and all of these are obviously the air intakes. So let's actually make it fly. It's a huge, huge monster. It's gonna take me a really long time to put it in the orbit, so I'm actually gonna skip this part uh, with the takeoff and everything else. And I'll really show you the last part when I actually get to the orbit. Um, I've done SSTO takeoffs before, and you can check out some of the other videos where I'll show you how, it, how it's done. But essentially, and here, I don't know why, for some reason, it always leans to the left, so I actually have to decrease my right engine thrust by a little bit because it tends to have this left um, turn. I don't know why. Uh, I think maybe it's a bug or something. And anywho, so let's take it off, let's make it fly and go into orbit, or try to at least. If I can take this into orbit, anything is possible. And here comes the big part, when we're about to take off, will it fly? Will it fly? It's definitely not, not flying right now, because I cannot take, simply take, take it off, but... Oh, oh, it's sort of flying. It's... Oh, no. Oh, look at the shadow, it's awesome. Oh, no, so close. I almost crashed. But I think I'm flying. Here comes my serpent. The shadow actually does look like a serpent. Um, and retrieve my gear, and let's begin our journey. So it's moving really, really, really slow. This will probably take me up to an hour to get into the orbital... Um, altitude but i can do it i have all the time in the world all uh, there's like what is it seven engines on it um i actually had to add two extra engines just because it wasn't enough thrust uh but this should be enough and inside of it is a bunch of kerbins and there we go through blood and sweat after many hours of struggling i put it into orbit uh there was a bit of uh difficulty here with uh, because i'm using multi engines and all of these are tur turbojet engines I actually had to um, thrust down a lot, and I had to essentially, through trial and error, through saving and reloading, try try really hard to reach that necessary speed. And once I did, I was able to reach the speed. I all I had to do is fly um, fly around Corbin a few times, increasing my speed just a little bit every time, and uh, disabling some of the engines. And actually, just using uh, I'll mostly use this one here, but I use some of the front ones as well because they don't actually let you, uh, they don't make you flip as much. And then after hours and hours of struggling, actually not hours, it was about two hours, I was able to reach 145 kilometer altitude. It's not a perfectly circular orbit, as I think my periapsis is 70 and my apoapsis is 145. All right, so next step, let's go and play around. And when I say play around, I mean play outside. Let's take all our Kerbins outside and let's make this into a zoo. And first outside is Bill Kerman. He is the scientist that had to be the first outside, and let's take everyone else out. I, it's gonna take me a while to take all 180 Kerbals out, so I'm gonna cut this out. So I'm, I just took out my third Kerbal, and I believe this is Bill Kerman or Bob Kerman, and there's already three of them outside. One is right there, this is Jebediah, and Bill is behind him. But my computer is already barely handling this. This is actually going to be insane. If I can actually take out all 180 of them out, it will be crazy. My computer will probably burn out. Anywho, so let's go ahead and take out our fourth fourth person. It's quite a lot of them. I actually literally have so many. I should probably turn the lights on too. Let's turn the lights on. 
and start with the first. I can actually, I wonder if I can actually uh, do it, if I can take them all out at once, or do I have to do them one by one, because this is actually taking way, way too long. Alright, that is really not good. That is really not good. Whatever just happened uh, is really not good. <laughs> I don't know why my uh, spaceship just separated. It was not supposed to happen. I now have two parts flying in space. Things did not go as planned. Now, all I wanted to do is take out my Kerbals, let them play in the sun, in the space. Anyway, let's just keep going. And here they come flying out, look at them, they're all going away into space, I don't know why they're not actually connected to the spaceship anymore, but whatever. We have so many to spare, and this is for science, for science and, and other things that are important in life. So here we go, more, more Kerbals, more Kerbals, we need more Kerbals, send more Kerbals to space. This is a Kerbal space program, at its best. Uh, hatch is obstructed, can't exit. Sure you can, just send them away, send more Kerbals. Oh no, this guy is holding on to his life. Let go, what's her name? Handler person. Let go. There we go. Oh my god, this is like Kerbal uh, madness. If you ever thought things cannot go crazier in Kerbal Space Program, you were wrong because they're about, they're about to get even crazier. My spaceship has separated into two parts and I'm literally releasing all of my spaceman into space. This is the first time I've actually taken 180 Kerbals at one time to space. And I'm pretty sure that's probably the only time I'll do it. I don't think I'll ever do it again. It seems really cruel because, look, they're all basically dead. Or not dead, but happy and flying in space. Alright, I think I have to stop here because my computer cannot handle so many Kerbals in space. Look at this. This is madness. Uh, forecast for today, it's showering Kerbals from space. And they all look so happy. Look at Chris Kerman. He's like, oh my lord, can I be the next? And he totally can be, but I think there's actually someone who's in, in between him and and the hatch. There's a there's a guy stuck in the hatch there, so he can't get out. But this is this is awesome. I love this. Um so yeah, the new essentially the new uh, modules allow you to send all your Kerbals to space all at once and do this, which is madness don't do this at home really don't because this is just crazy uh this is actually not all of them some of them are still inside i just my computer is just barely surviving this um i brought 180 so i might as well let them all out uh, and i might actually continue but just so you know this is crazy and this phase right here is essentially a summary of what's going on here it is madness it is sparta and it is awesome all of these little dots are Kerbals flying around. And there's, I think there's 180 in total. Some of them got stuck, so I couldn't take them out. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. This is how you take uh, 180 or possibly even more Kerbals into space. Uh, my spaceship unfortunately kind of destroyed itself, so I will not be able to just, to return back to Kerbal. Um, but there you have it. So this is the new parts that allow you to essentially take lots of different people, lots of different Kerbals into space at one time. Okay, thank you for watching, please subscribe, and in the next video we're going to explore some more Kerbal Space Program. Bye-bye, and game you later.